All right, people, so this is Ross. So in today's video, I thought we would talk about some of the new varieties, the new seed varieties I picked up from different nurseries online, um, different seed sellers, seed suppliers online. And, you know, we've done a video, by the way, if anyone's interested, you guys may have seen it, but on our recent episodes of Fruit Talk, we talk all about my garden plants, you know, for 2021. And we really label it all out in a really organized way because in the description of this video is a link to my spreadsheet and you can see all the plans that we're growing and where everything's gonna go. And most of the varieties you can see there as well. But I figure in this video, I wanna really uh, emphasize a few interesting varieties that I'm gonna be growing and maybe it could inspire you guys to to grow similar varieties or even just uh, a different species of plant maybe that you're not used to growing. Um, also got my seeds here together in this nice little box and I thought this was super organized because um, I have it all labeled out by uh, with you know dividers, these yellow dividers here. So I have like a section here for my spring vegetables, a section here for my tomatoes, my peppers, my melons, my summer vegetables beans, herbs, et cetera, et cetera. And it just made this whole thing a lot organized. And I think anybody can do this at home. So, you know, I'm gonna talk about this for a little bit and then we're gonna emphasize some of the varieties I think are really well worth um, the attention in this video. So let me um, zoom in here for you guys on the box. All right, so you can see it's pretty simple actually. I just got a box and then I got these dividers. You can pick these up anywhere. I would prefer, I would really prefer to pick up something a bit more sturdy. These are like paper thin, but then at the top you can just insert a label in there and it really nicely divides these. Um, now there's obviously things you can get that maybe are a bit more standard, uh, standard size and you can actually have these dividers actually clip on to the edges of the box or whatever it is that you're using. So if anyone's ever worked in an office, you probably know what I'm talking about. But this is pretty good for like a little makeshift thing. The only thing I'd really want is maybe to keep this whole thing in darkness. Um, maybe if there was a way to cover the top and keep it in total, total darkness. Um, what you don't want to do really is put this in a lot of light and put this in um, an area, let's say, of your house that's quite warm. You want to keep them about 50, 60 degrees. You know, I think uh, actually a root cellar is a pretty good area. Um, you know, nowhere where the, the temperatures are too moist or the environment's too moist, too warm, and there's a lot of light. But let's go on now to some of the varieties I really like. And you can tell I've really liked some of them because I bought them in such huge quantities like the Cylindra beet. I think it's just a pretty good beet. I mean, I, I'm not really too crazy about it in actuality. I, there might be a better beet out there, um, but it does seem to do well and it's uh, really beautiful and, uh, and tasty. The sugar snap pea, however, this is called sugar Ann, and this is definitely one of my favorites. Now, I've never actually grown sugar snap peas that were you know, require a trellis because sugar ant is so early and it's so uh, dwarf that it, it fruits earlier at an earlier date because the, usually the climbing sugar snap peas, they mature a bit later in the season, which would be nice to actually extend my season. Um, they also would produce more when they climb, but these produce so early at a time of the year where it's really quite difficult in my season, in my area to even get sugar snap peas, so I think these fulfill a really good slot of the season, and they're very tasty, they're very early, as I said. So for me, I think in my climate, it's hard to beat these, and um, I love, absolutely love the flavor of these. So right now we're in like the spring, fall section of my garden. These are like the crops that like cooler temperatures mostly. I mean, I do have some pak choy in here and some mizuna. We have some Chinese broccoli. I'm really looking forward to growing some of these different special types of uh, broccoli that I picked up from Seeds of Italy. 
And they have these different varieties here that they've imported from, from Franchi, which is a uh, Italian seed company. We, right here, we have a type of mustard. I have a couple types of mustard I'm looking forward to. Here's a more wild arugula that I really, uh, hopefully I can make this more of a perennial in my yard. Uh, we also have, this is a Sima de Rapa, which is kind of like a broccoli rob. Tastes a lot like broccolini, but it's a sprouting turnip, which is a probably, in all honesty, this might be my most exciting vegetable coming up. Um, so it really, it's like a broccoli rob that grows, hopefully as easy as a turnip does, because turnips are just so darn easy. And this would be prop, maybe even my favorite vegetable going into the season, so I'm really looking forward to that. This one here also has some really good potential to it. The Cavolo Broccolo Spigariello. Um, you can see here it's a late variety of broccoletti. Um, heavy cropper of greeny, green gray stems with small leaves. Numerous spears that will kind of uh, keep going. So this is a broccoli that you kind of use for the spears rather than the head. And I also have another one here from uh, Fruition Seeds called Pira. Piracaba, oh, man, I wish I could know how to pronounce this, but this is like similar. It doesn't produce a, your typical head broccoli that you would want. This is more for side shoots and um, produces in a long season. It says here, it has great flavor, tender long stems, sprout small sweet heads in abundance and produce more broccoli over the season than most single head variety. So for me, I'm really all about the brassicas. I love eating them. Um, I think in all honesty, they're some of the most nutritious and healthy foods that you can eat. So for me, I try to eat as many brassicas as I can on a daily basis. And uh, certainly having more variety of brassicas that, and they're also really tasty, having more of a variety is just a win-win for me. So I'm super excited for some of those that I think are really just, Unheard of, really. I mean, these are who has ever even heard of some of these things? So, at least for me, a grower in the United States, it's I'm looking forward to it. This one here also, uh, Zeffa Fio fennel. This is just your typical Italian fennel. Huge fan of fennel. Really underrated vegetable. I think people, <clears throat> really a lot more people should grow it. Let's move on now, I guess, to the tomatoes. And I have really quite a huge variety in here. I mean, we really went crazy with some of these varieties. This one really <clears throat> has got my interest. This is called Pianello di uh, Vesuvio, which is a crack resistant, long storing paste tomato. You can even use them, I believe, to dry and they're, they're early and you can actually hang them. So for me, I've been really into the tomatoes nowadays that you can hang that will extend the season. Let's say I am here in the sunroom and I have at the end of the season a bunch of tomato plants that are pretty much done for the year. Um, there's a lot of green tomatoes on them or maybe they're half green, half red or something. You can just pull the vines up out of the ground or even just bring in the, tr the trusses and not even detach the tomatoes and hang them up somewhere and you can extend the season pretty significantly. What I really was been trying to do this year, in addition to you know, having just tomatoes that will kind of extend the season like that, is also just dry a ton of tomatoes. So we have the Principe, de, uh, Principe Borghese tomato, which I don't know if I even have seeds of it here. Um, I have to look for it here somewhere in this mess of tomato seeds. I have so many so many tomato seeds in here. Um, some of them, so like are for drying purposes, some of them are for paste purposes, and some of them are for extending the season. I really got into that. It wasn't just about trying to find the next best tasty tomato variety like this one here, Thorburn's terracotta or uh, white Thomas sole, you know, um, or even like something like black beauty. You know, this was really about practicality, I think, first and foremost, of really expanding my, the varieties I grow for paste. 
storage. Here's the Principe de uh, Borghese. I don't know why I keep saying day, but um, as an example here, I've got Bear's Tooth and Sweet Tooth from Wild Boar Farms. And these are just two tomatoes that uh, should make a really, really tasty paste. And there's a number of them. I think I probably have in total maybe even close to 10 different varieties that should make a, a very interesting paste. Um, and I will hopefully, if I have enough tomatoes from each one, I'm gonna very specifically make a paste from each one, do a taste test, and then actually talk about which is my favorite paste tomato. Um, in addition to what already is my favorite is the white, the white banana, or the orange banana, excuse me. So then we have uh, peppers, and actually I have some melon seeds in here, so that's, not, that's in the wrong, wrong spot. But we did find one here that's called the uh, Sweet Bell Pepper. It's a Mountaineer variety, it's called. I really like this company for wishing seeds, by the way. This woman puts out some videos, and uh, she is really um, just as a joy, I think, honestly. Um, and I really do appreciate her information, and. Uh, you know, the varieties that she's promoting are varieties that she believes in. So that's, I think, a human, there's a human aspect behind the varieties that she's selling, which is, in all honesty, you know, from a, from a seller's perspective is a bad thing. From a buyer's perspective, I think is a good thing. Um, but anyway, it's sort of how I like to do my figs, is have a human you know, a human uh, perspective behind the product I'm selling. But anyway, um, this one here is supposed to be really, really productive in a very short season. So that's that's kind of why I'm into it. We also picked up, you know, uh, some habaneros, some um, ghost peppers. We're gonna make those into hot sauce. We also have the Aji Amarillo, which I hear is really fantastic in the kitchen and different uses like that. We also have the shishito pepper. And then of course your typical really variety that does super well here is the Jimmy Nardello. And also I have Carmen that I've saved seed from for my own peppers over the years. And uh, those two varieties are outstanding. Now the melons, we've really gone crazy this year. I mean, there's a ton of them in here. This one is definitely very interesting. It's called Zata. This is a Italian heirloom cantaloupe. And um, the cantaloupes are definitely some of the best tasting melons that you can grow. Here's another one called Haogen, which is a cantaloupe that has been saved at a kibbutz in Israel. Uh, we have the Ananas de Amerique a Cher Vert. This is, I think, actually a musk melon, if I'm not mistaken grown by Thomas Jefferson. There's a lot of very, very good varieties. Here's the Sharon Tay. One of them that I was really looking forward to growing is some of these Japanese varieties here. This is a Japanese musk melon. It's supposed to have 16 bricks. This one here is a Japanese uh, hybrid Sharon Tay type with 16 bricks. The Petite Gris de Rene is supposed to be the best melon in existence. And then of course you got Grisolette, which is Johnny's hybrid version of the Petite Grease. So uh, yeah, that's, that's really something special. Now, also have here, I mean, the standard. This is Silver Queen um, sweet corn. I think for heirloom purposes or for, you know, just overall getting a successful crop, it seems like that is one of the best varieties. Also have something here that's new, it's called a Gretti. And it's kind of in my mind like a, um, I don't even know how I would really describe it to be honest with you, let's read it. Mid-season annual, chive-like foliage and intense flavor, use fresh brazen olive oil as a side to meat dishes. I think it's quite, um, you know, uh, bitter perhaps, and maybe a bit fiery or spicy, kind of like, um, you know, dandelions, I kind of see it as a, as a dandelion side that's more of an, uh, a perennial that, well, it says annual, so actually it's an annual, but uh, yeah, I think it's more of like a summer dandelion. I actually ordered a, another 
something very similar to um, the dandelion this year as well that will grow in the spring and the fall that's uh, a type of uh, endive and I actually have your typical French endive here somewhere that really did well for me this fall um, believe it or not another one that I really want to recommend is this cucumber here it's the bait alpha cucumber um, this is definitely well worth growing here um, super productive it's one of those greenhouse cucumbers again actually developed on a kibbutz um, in Israel um, I think this is one of the best tasting cucumbers I've ever had and it's also extremely productive here's actually our seed to graft our melons onto this is a hybrid kabocha squash will make our melons more productive and disease and pest resistant the swallow eggplant highly recommend that for shorter seasons we've got some squash and different things in here now let's go on to the beans because i think the beans to me are really interesting we have the uh, chiba green soybean this is in all honesty one of the most productive soybean plants i've ever seen it's very compact and produces a ton of beans in a really small portion of the plant the plant doesn't really take up a whole lot of space as most soybeans really don't but the amount of soybeans i feel like that's in the you know in that area is just incredible you you can go back actually guys and see a video i did specifically on this variety in fact, some of the varieties here that we've mentioned, I have videos on them, and all you have to do is type in Chiba Green, type in the variety plus my name in YouTube, and it, it, should, it should come up if I've, if I've done a video on it. We've also got different beans in here, like Borlati beans and um, runner beans and Chinese red noodle beans, different runner beans we're gonna experiment with. I've got some beans in here from friends, and then I also have the bush beans um, and I have two different types actually some haven't arrived yet I'm still actually believe it or not I'm expecting maybe quite a few more seed packets to come in the mail um, maybe another 30 varieties of, of, of seed but uh, this here is the dragon tongue bush beans and I love these things so much that in all honesty it was well worth getting a large bag of them um, probably should save my own seed but these are like my favorite for actually roasting in the oven um, or cooking with they really really come out well um, and it's very different than your typical French bush bean which I actually have coming as well from Fedco in a larger size which um, I forget the name of it but it's a really tasty it should be a very tasty French uh, bush bean that's very tender and you can very easily eat it. We got some herbs back here. Nothing crazy, just cilantro, basil, oregano, parsley. We got some uh, sisso. And uh, I think that's mostly it for the herbs. And then that's mostly it here, guys. I think those are some of the things I really wanted to, to cover with you guys so that you get a, some idea of what I'm growing. You can follow along with me here in the season. And then also maybe this is inspiring some of you guys to do something similar. The Mokum carrot, I highly recommend. Also got the Tonda carrot coming in. I want to try that one because it's really supposed to be good in clay, or clay soils that are quite heavy. And it may have an interesting texture. We'll have to find out. Um, highly recommend by the way you guys check out some of these more interesting varieties of brassicas you know um, even if it's something like a chinese broccoli or an italian broccoli or it's an american variety it doesn't matter i do think a lot of these things here's the actually purple sprouting broccoli i want to try at some point it's more of a plant in the summer thing harvest the following season maybe a bit too cold here for it but uh yeah do do some research guys there's so many varieties out there i think i'm growing this year roughly 30 varieties of tomatoes and 24 varieties of melons and uh there's just so much genetics so i want to thank you guys here for watching this one sticking through to the end we'll see everybody soon all right take care and uh hit that subscribe button for me